guys, Kazi Dre here, and today I'm super excited to share with you some of the pieces from the Mac and Aladdin collaboration. As a Mac lover status, I was able to purchase some of these products early to share with you guys, so we're going to try them all on today. I'm going to do swatches on my eyes as well as try on the highlighter and lip color. I'm wearing the products today, and I am excited to share this with you guys. So if you are ready, let's get into it. Okay guys, I'm super excited to share these with you guys. So here's what the little palette looks like. I'm sure you guys have seen it. And all the little names are on the back here. So I'm gonna swatch each one on each eye. So the first shade is Riff Raff, which is a matte. So I'm super excited. I've never actually swatched on the eyes before. There are There is no primer on my eyes. So, okay, a really nice kind of crease color. Make sure you guys can see me. Really pretty crease color. And if we want to pack it on, I'm getting quite a bit of fallout in the pan. So I'll show you that in just a second. Okay. So it definitely packs more of a punch if you put it on, if you pack it on the eye. So there is that shade there. I feel like it looks a little silly uh, just with one eyeshadow, but I know that's the whole point. So there is the shade Riff Raff, but there is quite a substantial bit of fallout in the pan, so a bit powdery. Okay, shade number two is Rags to Riches. So this one, it says F, so I assume that means foil. It's a pretty shimmery color. This is a nice kind of subtle shimmer. Okay, now we're gonna pack it on the lid. like this one the texture is really nice on this one as well so we've got the shades Riff Raff and Rags to Riches shade number three is no ordinary lamp cleaning off my brush with my Veramona color switch dupe so this is a kind of light pinky peach color Really, really pretty in the crease. Then we pack it on. Okay, so there is No Ordinary Lamp. Next up is the shade Princess Jasmine, which is a foil and based on swatching it, I'm a little nervous. So let's one of those like attempted at duochromes. Yeah, this is not performing very well and I'm getting a ton of fallout in the pan. So it's not performing very well. This is likely going to require some sort of medium to get that shimmer. Otherwise it's just pretty flat. So let's see what happens when we pack it on. Yeah, it's a little better, but it just doesn't perform the way I hope it would. I'm not terribly surprised though. after seeing myself, like after I swatched it for you guys, I'm not that surprised that I'm not having much luck with this one. So let's, for the sake of the video, kind of dampen the brush. Okay, so we're gonna pack it on now. It's a little better, but it's, it's still a little lackluster for what you would hope for based on seeing the pretty pan. So a little bit of a dud shade there and some serious, serious fallout. So No Ordinary Lamp and Princess Jasmine. Okay, so the next shade is Aragba. Again, on that same fluffy brush, this is a foil finish also. So there is this one. It's a beautiful kind of deepened burgundy. It's not generally a shade I would blend into the crease, but based on the way it's performing, I think you could definitely 
blend this into the crease for a little bit of dimension. It's not overly glittery or shimmery. And then we're gonna pack it on the lid as well, of course, with a clean brush. I really like the way that looks on the lid. It's really, really beautiful. Okay, so there is that shade. Next up is the shade Abu, which is my favorite character from Aladdin. This is a nice kind of deepened plum shade. Well, it's not, it's a little patchy when I try to use my fluffy brush. You're seeing that? It's a little bit patchy. You guys see how there's like some patchiness happening right here? All right, and then we're gonna pack it on the lid. This is an interesting kind of, it's not matte, but it's not really a shimmer either. It seems to be a little less patchy when you blend it with a packing brush, but overall it's not the easiest shade to work with and we got some definite fallout. All right, so a Rabba and a Boo. I feel like I'm not pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, so like tons of fallout <laughs> happening right now, but this is a great representation of what's happened. Okay, so next up is Creative Copper, which is not a very creative name as it were. And of course my lids are dry. I think you know that, but just in case you don't. So I'm gonna brush again. It's a pretty kind of copper shade. Not overly pigmented though with a blending brush, but. And then we are going to pack it on the lid. This one has a little bit of punch. It's kind of a more of a metallic finish rather than a super like sparkly shimmery shade just kind of what you would expect in the pan. So that is Creative Copper. And now we're gonna do, now we're gonna do a Genie Life. So this is a pretty like metallic silver. Again, not really the texture for a crease kind of blending shade. So I'm not terribly surprised that I'm not getting a ton of pigment. But I expect and hope it will perform better with this flat brush. Yeah, it definitely performs better. I could, I'm still getting a ton of fallout. So just as a, a heads up, when I put my product, when I put my brushes in the pan, I'm getting a ton of fallout. Okay. So this is a genie life. We've got Creative Copper and Live the Genie Life. The very last shade is a matte. It is the shade Shadowy Lady, which appears to be a darkened kind of plummy brown. I'm a little bit nervous about how this is gonna perform because it's swatched a little patchy. Yeah, you definitely, it's not quite as dark in the, as I expected. It's a little bit patchy, but it's actually less patchy than that purple shade above it, so. Okay. And now we, we're gonna pack it on the lid, which is again, not how I would normally wear this shade. Yeah, it's definitely a lot patchier when you try to like pack it on but this is not really a packing shade in my opinion. So this is not looking very good. I just look like I got myself a black eye. It definitely has some purple in it, but yeah, it's quite patchy. As you can see, this one is gonna definitely require a little bit of work, but it might perform a little bit better on the outer V the shade shadowy lady okay so i'm gonna put my makeup on for real for real now we're gonna give the highlighter a go they call this a blush but it's definitely not a blush to me at least this is one always one jump ahead so there's what it looks like the beautiful little lamp the little genie 
lamp there. I'm gonna use, I don't know why I'm using Royal and Lang today, but Royal and Lang Nickel Highlight Ink Glow. This is my favorite highlighting brush. It's definitely a more intense highlighting brush. So here we go. Okay, that's really pretty. I was a little worried that it might be too deep to be as fair as I am, but it definitely has some gold in it. You know what, for fun, let's use a fluffier brush, excuse me, on the other side. Let's use a fluffier brush, the uh, Luxie Tapered Highlight, and just kind of see what we think. Okay, I actually may prefer the more kind of buffed version. There's definitely like a metallic finish to this. So there is the more like tightened side versus the like looser side. I'm gonna go ahead and just make this match. I'm gonna be beaming today. This is definitely a beaming highlight for sure. Okie dokie, so there is the highlighter. I really, really like this, especially for the summer. I think it'll be a nice glow. So finally, let's put on the lipstick. I picked up the shade Princess Incognito, which is their like nude shade. I worried that the others were not a good fit for me. So it's a traditional bullet lipstick. Let's, uh, let's put it on. Okay, so there is the shade right there. So let's go ahead and give you my final thoughts. Okay, so as far as the eyeshadow palette goes, this is their traditional nine pan palette. I think the shades are really pretty, but there are definitely some hits and misses, as you guys could probably see from the swatches. Unfortunately, this shade here in Princess Jasmine just doesn't perform really at all. It performs okay when you put your like fix plus or whatever your like dampening agent uh in with it but overall unfortunately this one just doesn't perform the way you'd hope it would looking as beautiful as it does in the pan so i'm pretty disappointed about that some of the mattes are really beautiful and blendable like these ones here at the top but the deeper one the deeper one here is a bit patchy as well as this kind of deeper more metallic shade here on the second row as well. But the shimmers, the metallics in here are really, really pretty. Uh, these two here, this one in the middle and this one at the top in the middle. So those are really beautiful. So for me, it's hit or miss. If you really like the Aladdin collaboration with MAC, I think you might really enjoy this eyeshadow palette. But if you're looking for this to be like your everyday awesome, this is an amazing quality palette. It's good, it's not great. Let's talk about the highlighter here, the uh, powder blush. In Always One Jump Ahead, so the uh, this is a definitely a golden shade. They did make a bronzer as well. I almost picked that up, but I decided not to. I may end up grabbing it after all, just based on the quality of this. I think this is really beautiful. I'm a sucker for a MAC highlighter, though. Most of my favorite most of my favorite highlighters are from MAC. So I really love this formula. I think it's really beautiful. Do I think it's a unique shade? No, I don't. I think I probably have some dupes in my collection if I were to look for them, but I do think it is a really beautiful shade. And if you were thinking about something to pick up, I definitely think that's a good one. And finally, let's chat about the lipstick here. Like I said, I did have Princess Incognita. Uh, I love that word. <laughs> Is that weird? The um, This is a traditional MAC kind of a bullet lipstick. It's a peachy pink shade, I guess is the best way I would describe it. It definitely is the same matte formula that I'm familiar with from MAC. So if you don't like the MAC matte lipsticks, you're probably not gonna like this. It definitely has a bit of a tug on the lips. It's not the like smoothest and creamiest. It's a little bit more of a drying formula. That being said, it will probably last pretty well on my lips. I'll leave some updates in the description bar for you guys in terms of like wear time and things like that because in order to get this video live for you guys in a timely manner, I won't be able to do kind of a wear test and check in. But overall, it's it's creamy, but it's not super creamy. It's definitely a matte formula, but I suspect it will last pretty well on the skin. Again, not a super unique shade. It's a pretty shade, but it's not something that's necessarily super duper special. So that is it guys. Let me know what, if anything, are you picking up from the Mac and Aladdin collection? 
are you gonna see the movie? I already have my tickets, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm super duper pumped about this collab. I love Disney, I love Aladdin. So I was really excited to pick this up early for you guys. If you did enjoy this video, I do hope that you will give it a thumbs up and let me know if you like those eyeshadow swatches on the eyeballs and not the eyeballs. That would be very bad on the eyes. Um, and subscribe if you haven't done so already and I will catch you guys in my next one. Bye guys.